Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another training session with Andy. Uh, I'm your host for Lux Power, and today we're going to be uh, rolling out the Eco Beast. Um, it's a model that many of you who came to the trade show in Johannesburg uh, would have seen. Um, we had a dummy model there, and um, uh, today we have the working models. We There were 18 that came into the country. Uh, one we're keeping here as a test unit, and the other 17 We'll be rolling out through our uh, importer, which is CMDM. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, um, probably all of those have been pre-booked already. So those of you, you who have pre-booked your models, they will be going out this week. So keep in touch with your uh, with your distributor and make sure that you get the, the, the unit that you booked. Okay, so we're going to start with the, uh, with the with training uh, slide. Um, so I'm going to jump straight into slideshow. All right. Okay, guys. So um, uh, let me take this down there. Okay, so here we have uh, Lux Power's first all-in-one model release. Uh, we call it the Eco Beast. Um, and it's released for the entire European market, and it embraces complete energy independence. Um, uh, key features about the EcoBeast is, number one, it has a very quick install. Uh, we've timed it. We've done one this morning. It takes us less than 15 minutes to set up. Um, it comes with a 10 millisecond off-grid switch. Uh, the DC to AC ratio is up to 1.6, and we'll go into that in detail a little bit later. And then, obviously, um, the Beast comes with uh, the with the inverter on the top and then the, the particular model that we brought in was the 10.24 which comes with two 5.12 uh, batteries on either end okay so let's uh, the content that we'll go through today is particularly this it's the product profile the core advantages specification application advantages installation guide the cost effectiveness and advantages the after sale service and support and obviously the market prospect Okay, so uh, the product, we called it the Eco Beast, um, and the reason it's called the Beast is because it's a six kilowatt with a mighty punch. It comes with uh, uh, the ability to put out six kilowatts on uh, EPS or on uh, emergency power supply, uh, as long as the batteries are there to support it. Uh, it comes with two, this, this particular model will come with two 5.12 uh, Hynar batteries or the Lux Power battery. Um, and those are 1C discharge batteries. So with two of them, uh, they 10.24, they will be more than capable of putting out six kilowatts of power. Okay, so the design, uh, it's an all-in-one design. Uh, the EcoBeast uh, features an inverter and a battery stack design offering an aesthetically pleasing and space-saving solution. And once installed, it operates as a complete and integrated system. So when you, you know, we, we're going to, I'm, I'm sure you, you should be able to see it a little bit in the background, but we've kept with the color scheme of having it uh, silver. Um, it's got a nice new rounded design um, with a black uh, offset line um, and some great uh, access points for um, the cabling. Um, it's a fully, it, so you can, you can operate it um, in fully off-grid operation. Uh, it's got it's flexible for expandability. Um, unfortunately, with the design weight uh, uh, restrictions, you can only stack two batteries on top of each other. I think we could possibly get away with three, um, but if you want to expand the system, for instance, to a twenty point four eight. Uh, kilowatt hour battery then you would have to stack the two batteries next to next door to the original one um but you know it's it still makes for a very very uh, neat and tidy design um and then you we also have the extended after sales warranty remember that the inverter itself is an sna um uh, so unfortunately the maximum a warranty that we can give you on the inverter by itself is three years, but the battery modules uh, will come with a 10 year warranty. Okay, um, we have uh, advanced technology integration. So, um, you know, it goes without saying that the SNA is the best selling uh, off grid inverter in uh, South Africa at the moment. Um, and now we've incorporated the six kilowatt inverter, the SNA, um, and despite it being an off-grid model, it includes most of the features that are typically found in our LXP range, uh, which is our the the, the our full hybrid uh, range, and it offers a comprehensive solution of exceptional cost effectiveness. 
The, the, uh, once again, I'm going to go on about the ease of installation. We've done them. Um, they're quite easy to do. Um, there is an unboxing video that I've done, uh, which will go out. Um, and it basically shows you that in the inverter box itself, you will get the base uh, of the battery of stand uh, and the inverter. And then in the battery um, module boxes, they'll obviously just be the batteries as well as all of the cabling that's required. So the machine ships standard with a set of DC cables for the batteries to link the batteries up from uh, bottom module to the top module and to the inverter. It also ships with the communication cables to the batteries. Uh, and um, there are also, a, there's a pack of, of bolts and screws and brackets, which you will need when you are securing the, the uh, inverter to uh, itself, first of all, and then obviously to the wall. And with a little bit later on with a walk around, I'll show you exactly how we do that. And then earlier on, I mentioned about the extended warranty. We will give you 10 years warranty on the batteries and three years on the inverter. Okay, so uh, here we go to the specifications page. On the top left of your screen, you will see the uh, max PV input power is, uh, let me just move, I just need to move this out of the way so I can see. Uh, it's eight kilowatts. Um, so we have four kilowatts per MPPT. There are two MPPT inputs. The PV input voltage range is from 100 volts up to 480. Now remember that the 480 volts is purely your maximum uh, voltage that you can put in and it's the it's the unloaded voltage or it's the voltage without load so uh if you take your closed circuit voltage on your panels then our maximum our v the voltage of the maximum uh array can then be 385 volts per input and that is per input okay um this particular machine has the upgraded mppt which means it can take 17 amps per input and the maximum short circuit current is 25 amps. Now, I know a lot of you are, and we can see it when it comes through on the uh, support lines, how people want to know, um, you know, there, there's always a question of, is it is it four kilowatts per MPPT uh, or is it eight kilowatts? So uh, we need to harp on the fact that it's four per MPPT. You can configure it to two independent inputs, which is four kilowatts and four kilowatts, or you can bring down uh, eight kilowatts, which is bridged, and I'll show you in the next slide how we do that. But remember that the maximum current that you can put run through the MPPT is 17 amps. So even if you're bridging into uh, two and you're running a bridge across the um, uh, bridge piece across the inputs, that your your maximum input will still be 17 amps. So you've got to be very very mindful of that. Okay, and then uh, moving to the right of the top, we got uh, our grid voltage is 230 volts. Uh, maximum input power is 9,000 watts or nine kilowatts. And basically, what that means is that's the the bypass current that the machine can handle. Um, it's nine kilowatts. So uh, even though it can only invert six kilowatts. The maximum power that you can put through it is nine, meaning that when the machine is in the on-grid position and all of the combined loads that you've got attached to uh, the EPS output can max out at nine kilowatts, which means that the inverter will give you six kilowatts from PV and battery, and the balance will come from the grid. Okay, and the max continuous AC pass-through current is 40 amps. Um, and then moving down to the bottom left quadrant, we've got the battery. Uh, the charging current on this particular machine is 140 amps, and the discharge current is 140 amps as well. Um, and obviously, this is uh, limited to the batteries that you have. For instance, if you buy the EcoBeast with one module only, then the battery charging limitation will be 100 amps, uh, and that is to match the uh, one single module. All right, and then the, the UPS output or the EPS output, uh, the rated power output is 6 kilowatts. Um, because it's a six kilowatt SNA and the rated output current is 26.5 amps. The overload protection, five seconds at 150% of six kilowatts or 10 seconds at 110% uh, to 150% overload. All right, and then um, let me move some of this out of the way so that I can see. Uh, switching time, uh, single system is 15 milliseconds. And then obviously, if you're going to parallel it, in other words, you're going to have two eco beasts next to each other, then we expect a switching time of about 30 milliseconds, which we've tested in our lab. And then the surge power duration is 2 p.n. For, for less than two seconds, which means two times the maximum power 
the nominal power, right? So if it's six kilowatts, it means it can do 12 kilowatts for under two seconds. And that is to accommodate four uh, pump filter. All right, let's move along to the next slide. Um, residential energy storage. Okay, so the application advantages here we've got is it's a self-consumption PV storage system, which means that it's, an, you know, you're integrating uh, PV with an all-in-one energy storage system. So the excess power that you're harvesting from your PV can be stored in the battery and it can be used or cycled during the day or alternatively you can, you, you can store the excess power in your battery and then draw it out at night. And now, especially with our, um, with NURSA approving the 12% increase on uh, the, the energy cost for starting on the 1st of July. So remember that if you guys have got quotes out there, you've got to remind your customer, even though we haven't had load shedding, the main focus of installing a solar system is for energy saving, not just load shedding. You know, um, UPS functions, uh, it shouldn't be your primary uh, factor for selling or deciding to buy an energy storage system. It should be for energy saving or energy conservancy. So next month, NURSA has approved a 12% across the board increase for residential, uh, which means that your power costs are going up by 12% or uh, that's per annum or 1% per month, uh, which is a big increase. Um, so if you, for instance, what you can do is, you know, you've got to revisit all of your old quotes and have a look uh, at them. And and one of the things that we're going to be punting soon is the um, ability of the six kilowatt uh, SNA, as well as the EcoBeast can do it as well, um, as well as the 12, the, the five kilowatt LXP, the eight, the 10 and the 12. All of those machines can work as uh, grid tied units without battery, which means you can go back to your customers and sell them a, an inverter, which comes with an external CT clamp, no batteries, but with a fuller range of panels and that allows the customer to harvest power during the day and supplement their loads it's a very simple installation because you cut out the the pv combiner box as well as the ac combiner box where you're moving the eps loads to the other side it's one single connection from your uh, from your db to the machine and back through one circuit breaker and all the machine will do is it'll harvest pv power and supplement the loads during the day Okay, um, and then just sticking with the eco beast for uh, commercial energy storage, you know, you've got time of use management where businesses can store energy during off peak periods when their electricity rates are lower. For those of you who have split tariffs and then use the stored energy in peak periods when the rates are higher, especially for our clients in Europe. Uh, and then grid st stabilization, the energy storage unit can supply the power to businesses during peak demand periods, helping to balance the grid load and reduce the strain on the grid. And this could particularly also be relevant to those of you who are charged for uh, apparent power. Um, okay, um, and then here we have the installation garden. So um, this is this particular this next section is just going to go through the installation garden. All right. So um, the EcoBeast is an IP20 machine, right? So which means that it's a, it has a recommended indoor installation, right? Please, guys, I've seen SNAs installed. Uh, they say it's indoors, but it's actually outdoors under a little uh, lean-to or an awning or a little avdaki, for those who speak Afrikaans. Uh, and we've had machines come in here with high corrosion, uh, patina rust on the on the components, um, machines that have got ingress of uh, condensation with dust. Uh, and unfortunately, those things are not ca carried under warranty. So please, uh, as an installer, you have a responsibility to explain to your customer that despite where they want to put it, you've got to be the one that tells them the right location for the machine. So you're going to avoid high salt and high humidity. So especially for us here in Cape Town and on the coastal regions, the SNA is not ideal nor recommended for close to the, the, the coast. I know a lot of guys are asking, but how far from the coast will we warrant it? Um, we're going to define that in a mileage range, but definitely not, you know, if you've got a seaside home, it's not going to be advisable to put this machine there because the chassis of the machine is uh, pressed out of mild steel. It's powder coated. And then also it draws in uh, its cooling uh, via fans across the internals of the machine. Now, what I have noticed is with the new models that have come out, the new designs, especially with the new six SNAs that are coming, the, uh, the level of protection that we've put over the machines, it literally looks like clear varnish. It's that thick. Um, so we have, as uh, from our side on the R&D team, uh, to Joshua and Joey and his team in in in, uh, in uh, Shenzhen, 
Uh, we've got to take our hats off to them. They've really listened to what our problems are and they've they've put in extra coating on those things, but it doesn't make the machine any higher rating than IP20. So please stick with the IP20 rating, avoid the high salt and humidity and consider additional lightning protection. And that's the one that I'm going to harp on, especially for the guys up in Johannesburg. Um, we see a lot of machines coming in with surge protection um, damage, uh, lightning uh, damage. Uh, and when I say surge protection, I'm talking about when the grid goes off and it comes back on again, we get a massive surge coming through. Or there could be um, uh, convection current coming from lightning strikes. So lightning strikes don't have to be direct. They can be indirect, but we do get them. And we see a lot of damage uh, in that regard. So please, guys, make sure that when you do the installation that you're going to install your par your, your panels, uh, you must have your panels must be earthed. The rails have got to be earthed. You've got to do um, earth spikes for them. Um, you've got to measure um, the uh, uh, the resistance of your earthing and, and do that according to the SANS code. Um, you've got to earth the machine correctly. Your PV that comes in has got to go through a DC SPD, a rated DC SPD for uh, uh, our area. Um, and then you, you do the same thing on the AC side. The, uh, the feed to the machine must also go via an AC SPD. All of our machines come with built-in surge protection. But, you know, we, we are using uh, um, metal oxide varistors, uh, which is the standard for uh, surge protection. Uh, but, it you know, that's your primary protection. You've still got to put in secondary, secondary protection upstream of the feed of the machine. And that's purely to protect your customer's investment. It doesn't cost a lot. In a lot. I know that on an invoice, a DC SPD can run uh, a couple of hundred rand. But trust me. Uh, you know, if you if you're spending over a hundred thousand rand or you know over fifty thousand rand on an installation, it's well worth it to put in AC and DC SPDs. Okay, avoid dusty environments. Um, so, uh, especially if you are, uh, you might be in the Karoo or in an area where there's high dust uh, prevalence, then consider putting uh, a dustproof net around the machine or uh, or put them putting the machine in an area where you can protect it from dust ingress. Because like I said to you earlier on, these machines have got fans, uh, cooling fans, which suck air from the outside to the inside of the machine. And they will definitely, even though they go through filters, they will definitely still suck in some uh, moisture. All right, so here we've got a circuit di or system diagram of the EcoBeast, uh, which gives you a typical layout of what the machine looks like. So here we have our PV coming in. It goes through a DC SPD, and then obviously goes into the top here. The Remember that the EcoBeast um, uh, will now also come with the, um, with the smart load function. So here you can have your generator input um, here. And the generator input will also double up as a AC coupling input or an auxiliary output, uh, which is a firmware that we rolled out last week. Um, and uh, as it becomes, as we adapt it better and better for the market, um, we're definitely going to be uh, sort of doing dedicated um, uh, training sessions on those. And then here you have your EPS output. You can see the output goes through a, a circuit breaker. And then our grid supply comes in from here this, the, the EcoBeast comes with an external CT. The positive goes through there. It goes through your uh, SPD, circuit breaker, and then sorry, um, your, your, your grid mains. And then up here, we have the SPD and then the breaker feeding the machine. And then obviously on this side here, you have your non-essential loads, which goes off uh, independently off the panel. Okay. Um, all right, so let's have a look at the battery connection. Um, and I'm gonna show you in a little video, uh, um, shortly, uh, let me see, we've jumped ahead here. Okay, so I don't know for some reason this this particular slide will just keep on jumping, but uh, I'm going to take you in the next uh, after this. I'll take you on a little video and I'll show you how the battery connection works. All right, so on the PV connection, um, the uh, the DC um, or the DC side of the machine. Uh, the PV supports identical string input, or basically where you have two strings facing the same direction like north and you want to you, you want to do um, a series string a series string and then parallel them and bring them down you can do that or alternatively you can do independent strings which means you have a north and a I mean a, a, a east and a west or you might have a northeast and a northwest facing you can bring them down as two independent strings or you might have all of them north facing or whichever direction you're facing them you can bring them down as two independent strings obviously the cost of that installation is a little bit higher 
because you're bringing down two sets of cables, uh, two sets of SPDs and things like that. But uh, that's the way we like it to be done because it's quite efficient. Okay, so this particular diagram here just talks to you about a, a series example. Yeah, you can see they've got the panels all in series and then the positive and the negative goes into the machine here. And then obviously remember that your rating here, the open circuit voltage rating is 480 volts. But once the circuit is closed and there's load on there, the voltage should drop. And the maximum voltage that we're looking there uh, for there is 385 volts. Okay. And then jumping along to the two to the parallel installation on your roof, you can have a, a, a series string here and a series string here. Then you can parallel them on the roof and bring down one set of cables, bring it into the machine, and then you can obviously bridge it across on the inside and say that you've got um, two two strings in parallel. And then uh, the logic of the machine will obviously uh, accommodate for that. On our AC connection, before making the AC connection input, just make sure that you, that you open the DC uh, protection uh, connection first. And I'll show you that on the machine. Um, and then the rest of us just talked about basic stuff on how to uh, bear your cables, how to put them in. You know, I like uh, to do neat installations, preferably, um, especially if you're using braided cable, uh, is to bootlace them. Uh, for instance, if you're running a 10 mil cable to use bootlace ferrules on the end, uh, it just neatens up everything. And especially on your PV cable as well, don't just bear the cables and and uh, neaten up the windings like this by hand. It's uh, the, the the right way to do it is to bootlace ferrule them because you can never be sure that you might have a, a, a uh, an errant strand or loose strand uh, that's sticking out and then it, it just arcs or something else. Uh, and that might cause a problem in the in in the long run. Obviously, um, a single strand will just burn out, but uh, you know it just makes for professional and neat workmanship. All right, um, and then here we have a look at the diagram of the machine. Here you can see you have your generator uh, going in through a circuit breaker into the machine. Um, here you have your EPS load. You have um, a circuit breaker here. You have one here as well, and this is your AC output. And then the AC input, which is the grid, uh, also running through um, a circuit breaker and into the machine. And here you can see that we, we have a, a changeover or interconnectivity between the two uh, here. So that, for instance, if we put the changeover into uh, grid position, then uh, it simply means that the power will come in and go across there and out. All right. So this is a changeover here, and that's the circuit breaker. And then here we have our individual things coming in. Um, and uh, we, you know, obviously the maximum that we, that it's rated for there, this is not talking about the PV input, but it's right, uh, we're talking about the rating of the cables, which is 600 volts, right? And that there is the all American uh, wire gauge uh, symbol for the type of cabling that you can use. All right, so the EPS load connection, um, it's very similar to uh, the SNA. As a matter of fact, it's the same thing. Um, and I'm going to show you in the little video uh, shortly um, how the connection looks. Uh, it's very well thought out. So you have your AC in here, and then you have the EPS out. Um, and the nice thing about the, the SNA is it's got a built-in circuit breaker for your AC in, um, which means that uh, you can save on cost by uh, not, so in other words, you don't have to install the circuit breaker because the circuit breaker on this machine is outward facing. Uh, it is, however, a single pole breaker so it only runs the live through there. Um, and you have to check your regulation and make sure that um, if, if a single pole breaker will suffice for passing um, the test, okay? Um, and uh, the generator features here, we're talking about, uh, um, something that's very similar to the SNA as well. We also have on the inside, I'm going to show you on the video as well, we support the drive contact uh, for the remote starting and manual starting. Um, it has the smart load and AC coupling functionality, which we released last week. Um, and it also has the generator boost function. Now the generator boost function is a new feature that we've incorporated before. Remember that the, the, on the old SNA fives, which we still currently uh, are circulating in the, in, in, the, in the market, those machines cannot, they do not have the gen boost function. Um, because of the ex the extra CT that we have built in, but the new machines have got a CT on the on the generator input. Um, so what it can do is when you activate the Gen Boost function, it will allow you to in an off grid situation for 
and you, if, if you've got a generator running, it will allow you to have PV and generator support the load. So PV will charge the battery and support the load with the generator. On the older machines, we couldn't do that because we didn't have a built-in CT. But on the new machines with a built-in CT on the generator input, we are now able to uh, offer the gen boost function because we can control leak current back out through the generator port, which is obviously very dangerous. Okay. Um, I'm moving along here, when using the generator, the generator cannot be started by the dry contact. It will be needed to to manually shut down after the, the grid power is restored. So this basically just explains that if you've got a generator with an auto start function and you're using the dry contact, the uh, EcoBeast can start the, the, the generator remotely. Uh, and when the power comes back on again, it can also shut down the generator. It can also uh, stop and start the generator based on your battery voltage um, uh, conditions. But if you are using a generator with a manual start, you physically have to go out and start the, the generator. And then it just reminds you through this uh, uh, diagram that you've also got to turn the generator off when the grid comes back on again. We do have a safety feature built into the SNA, all of them, the SNA5, the 6, and the EcoBeast, that if you've got a generator running and you've got a uh, grid coming in at the same time, um, it will only accept power from one of them. The, so in other words, if one relay is open, the other one will close. Uh, and that's a safety feature that we've built in. Unless, of course, you've enabled the, the AC coupling uh, function, then it will open that relay when uh, it controls the uh, the AC coupled inverter. Um, all right, uh, generator operation diagram for off-grid mode. And this here basically just discusses exactly what we've been speaking about. Um, uh, you know, where a single inverter allows a maximum input power of 7.3 kilowatt it doesn't limit you to a, a 7.3 kilowatt inverter. You can put on an 8 or 12 kilowatt inverter. That's fine. But the, what it means here is that the maximum power allowed or the incoming power through the generator port will be limited to 7.3 kilowatts. Okay. So it's never going to draw more than that through your uh, gen input port. Um, and then uh, external CT connection. Pretty cool. Uh, the the EcoBeast comes uh, equipped with a an external CT, which you will find in the box when you unbox it. Uh, please, guys, uh, speak to your, your assistants and the guys that help you. We've had many people throw manuals away. Oh, the manual is the first thing they throw away. But we have many guys throwing dongles away, and they tell you there was no dongle in the machine. So be careful. Remind you guys, there is a CT in the box. Uh, it's typically colored blue, and I'll see if I can grab one and show it to you. But um, that's a CT which comes standard with the machine, all right? Um, so make sure that you don't throw away the, bo the boxes until you've located your CT. And then uh, this particular uh, diagram here just talked about the CT uh, port connection. Um, and that's purely because if you need to cut your cable, the CT cable, or you're going to add a, an aftermarket CT if you've perhaps broken yours, then this diagram just shows you how to wire the CT. And it's basically just two cables that we need, and we're going to use um, an, uh, five and six. And the, the cabling will go into this port here, which is the MPPC485 and CT. And even on the SNA6, uh, you, it goes into this port here. Okay. All right, uh, settings for the CT installation. It's pretty much the same as the SNA6. For those of you who've installed the 6 already, uh, on screen, uh, you have the CT offset feature here. You can enable it, and then obviously you're going to set your, your CT offset. And then here on the on the web interface, you're going to uh, connect it. You're going to set your, um, you're going to enable the fact that it's got a CT, and then you can also set your CT offset power here. And that's typically if you've got a prepaid meter and you want to stop your uh, exporting at a certain value, then you can set it to a negative value for like, for instance, minus 20 or minus 50 watts. And that will um, that will always ensure that 20 watts or 50 watts is imported from the grid. Okay, cost effectiveness and advantages. Um, the integrated design, obviously, if you have a look at it, it just looks fantastic. It's great to install. 
Um, there's no wall mounting as such. You don't have to. Uh, you are going to be drilling into the wall to anchor the machine against the wall, but the, you're not. You're not putting up brackets. You're not hanging the machine off the wall. It's literally self-supporting. The cost savings are it's a lower initial investment cost, uh, and there's obviously reduced maintenance costs in the long term. And uh, because we've optimized the the performance of the machine, uh, including the intelligent management, it just gives your system a very very high efficiency. Okay, reliability and safety. It's got high integration. Uh, the highly integrated design reduces intercomponent connectivity issues and, and it enhances the system re reliability. Uh, it's also got some safety features that are built in, and we're going to go through that in detail in a second. Uh, and then also uh, the flexibility of the applications. Um, the all-in-one uh, storage facility can be used in various scenarios. And, all, and obviously, it's also scalable, meaning that you can uh, you can increase it. You can improve the uh, the size or increase the size of the of the battery storage, as well as putting more than one machine in parallel on either a single phase parallel installation or a three phase installation. Okay, so um, let's just go through this here quickly. The after sales uh, service and support. We've got a fantastic team of guys um, who are employed full time by Lux Power. Um, we are based here in Cape Town. Uh, in a call center, and many of you have had interactions with them. They are online every day, Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. until 4.30, and a lot of us are working after hours as well, and then also to the guys out there who are manning and are responding on the support groups. We have the professional support groups on WhatsApp as well as the DIY support groups, and they are very, very well supported, very well. Uh, the, the feedback is good. Um, sometimes on a weekend or public holidays, it might not be as fast as what you expect, but there's always somebody there to give you a some direction or to give you the answer that you need. Um, the, te the technical support, um, we've got a 24-7 hotline. And obviously, the 24-7 refers to the fact that we work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, purely because our team in China are online. Uh, they start at 8.30 or 9 in the morning at China time. They're six hours behind us. So effectively, that is um, you know by 2.30 a.m. our time. Uh, the guys are online already. You'll have Phil and Joe and uh, Creek and, um, uh, you know, I forget some of the other names, but the guys are online. They're monitoring the WhatsApp groups. They're monitoring the WeChat. Uh, so if you've got problems there, they're working. Uh, and I know Joe, for a fact, works until uh, one or two in the morning, China time. So it's quite, it's not uncommon to get him up right up until six or seven o'clock in the evening, as well as Creek and the team. Uh, uh, so um, we try our best to, cover the technical support throughout any region's 24 hours. But, you know, obviously there's going to be uh, some times that we, or, or gaps that we miss it. Uh, maintenance and servicing, our global network of after sale service centers is expanding step by step. Um, you know, we've got centers here in South Africa, um, uh, Kubis and his team up in uh, Pretoria, they run a fantastic uh, service center at uh, Solar Europe. We've got CMBM in uh, Midrand. Uh, we've got two new centers, one opening up in Vidbank and the other one, another one opening up in uh, Pretoria West as well. Um, I've just recently come back from Brazil, uh, where we've got a fantastic launch going out there with uh, Talison and his team in Moringa, and uh, we're going to be attending the Intersolar Show in Brazil in in August. It's a massive, massive, massive market, uh, and we're pretty excited about that. And obviously for Italy, for you guys listening in Europe, um, uh, as well as uh, Spain, uh, you know, uh, Jose Manuel and his team, uh, the U.S., we've got a very, very big um, presence there um, with our uh, with our partners out in uh, Sulphur Springs in Texas. Um, and then uh, we've got an office which we're relocating to, uh, to uh, Texas as well. Um, Pakistan and, um, and India are new markets for us. We're pretty excited about that. So, you know, Luxpower, despite being one of the smaller R&D development uh, inverter companies, we are certainly growing and making an impact. And we couldn't do this without your help. I mean, you know, it's it's the users, the end users and the supporters and the installers that are constantly recommending our product. You are the guys we've got to thank for our success. Uh, we are here to support you uh, and we're here to listen. I always tell people that Lux Power, with Lux Power, you get family. You know, when you when you decide to install our products, you, you're teaming up with a great family of people who are here to listen to what you want. And uh, the guys are never too slow to either make changes to firmware or to make changes to the hardware uh, to suit your market. 
Okay, a software support and upgrades. You guys know how that works. Um, you know, Mama and her team uh, have been working tirelessly to make it simpler and simpler for anybody to have access to uh, firmware updates. And especially with our new i9 Luxpower batteries, you're now, be, you're now able to update uh, and, and, and um, maintain your, your batteries remotely through the Luxpower portal. Training and education. Uh, you know, we do a lot of on-site training and, uh, and online training resources. Um, and especially um, guys like uh, Kubis and his team in at Solar Europe in Pretoria. Uh, sorry, they're just north of Pretoria in order support. You know, they run weekly training sessions. Uh, I encourage you guys, if you're up in that area, you know, uh, hook up with them uh, and 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 go and go and sit in on their training sessions. It's very informative. We do weekly Zoom training sessions um, here from our Cape Town base, and we're also offering it to our. Um, our distributors, our big distributors, especially it doesn't matter where you are in the country. If you want us to come to your uh, location, we, we will bring a team of one or two people. You set up uh, the location, um, you set up uh, your installers, and we'll come and do on-site training for either installers um, or your your your, your in-house staff who, who offer support to your customers. Uh, we're definitely doing that. Um, so please reach out to us. You can reach out to me. You can reach out to Mau Mau. Um, or to any one of our team uh, and book a session with us. Okay, uh, the market prospects, like I said, I'm, you know, this is all going to be available on video. Um, it's the easy installation and use, uh, the technological advancements, uh, model expansion, and the market demand and policy support. Um, you know, so we've got an extremely strong global energy policy supporting energy storage technologies, which include subsidies. You know, here in Cape Town, they're very progressive with that type of thing. The tax incentives, I'm not sure the tax incentives from SARS are still running for, for PV, but it's definitely something looking at. And then also research funding and uh, 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 the, these are the, the, the driving and the development of the all-in-one energy storage system market. It's definitely something that we, we are going to be growing in. Uh, you know, we've had a fantastic response from our clients in Japan. Uh, we do a 12 kilowatt all-in-one system for them. And we're currently developing a 24 kilowatt uh, single phase all-in-one system for a very big client of ours in uh, based in the U.S. So uh, we've got some good things happening. Okay, so um, just to wrap it up, uh, the, you know, the, the all-in-one energy storage systems offers for significant market advantages. It's highly integrated design, ease of installation and maintenance. Um, the technological advancements for this particular design is just, you know, we, we, we definitely not the pioneers in this area, but we definitely are, are bringing a solid, solid product to the market. So it's well worth a look at. And I can't wait to see um, the response that we're going to be getting from, from our, uh, from the guys that, uh, are, are currently um, doing that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to um, my um, I'm going to switch to the camera and we're going to uh, take you through uh, 0840. Sorry, just give me a second. 757 join. So I'm going to join uh the meeting and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we're gonna stop that share. And sorry guys, I'm just going to need to find I need to find myself. Okay, I've found myself and I'm gonna make yes. Okay, so uh, here we are. Stop video. All right, so uh, let's switch it around. All right, so here we are, you know, uh, don't mind the background of the workshop, it's quite messy, but um, let me just make sure that uh, I go, yeah. 
Okay, here we go. So I hope you guys can see this is what the eco beast looks like. Um, so in the in the in the consignment that you get, um, you will have the, the six kilowatt SMM, which is this, and you will have this base. Um, this particular this base at the bottom here will be in one box, uh, along with uh, some other uh, bits and pieces. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put down that base. Then you're going to stack the batteries one on top of the other. They are locating points on the base, and then there are feet, rubber feet on each battery, and they locate inside those things. So it's, it's very, very easy to mount. So once you put down the base, you're going to stack a battery, you can stack another battery, and then you stack the machine on top of it. Inside the machine, you're going to find a passive with brackets like this. These brackets are to connect here, and then obviously to mount the against the wall. And then you will notice that each battery has a bracket here and here. So what you're going to do is um, you obviously put it in place. You're going to loosen this screw here, push that to there, mark it on the wall, and then take pull it away again and pre-drill your holes so that when you put the stack up again, you can simply loosen these screws, slide the L bracket forward, and then anchor it against the wall. That's the, the first part. Then the other part I wanted to show you is here we just got a very rudimentary um, installation of the machine. So we've got our grid coming in. Uh, here, we've got our AC in there, and you'll notice that the AC in goes through the connector block here, but it also comes in via this uh, circuit breaker, which is a single pole uh, 63 amp uh, circuit breaker. So on the on the particular screen of the machine, if I can get it up here, uh, on this, you'll see that here, yeah, on a cycle third, there's the grid, right? It's so if I switch that off, immediately the grid goes to zero. So all I've done is I've switched this breaker off here, and it now shows that the machine is in off-grid mode. So if we go to if we look here for grid A, we see that grid A is a zero box. If I put the circuit breaker on again, immediately the um, frequency comes through. So you'll have a look there, you can see that the voltage is now 238 volts. Okay. So this circuit breaker here, okay, so that your wire comes in, it comes via this breaker, and then it goes into the machine. So this particular switch here will switch the EcoBeast on or off, right? So there is no, unlike the, the six kilo SNA where you have an EPS output and you have an on and off switch, this particular machine only has an on and off power switch. There is no switch which is driving the EPS uh, output relay, okay? Then, if we have a look at the top here, remember earlier on we spoke about the uh, generator connection. So here we have the drive contacts for the gen. Uh, which, so if you have a generator, if you're doing an installation for uh, for uh, an off-grid installation with a auto start generator, you're going to be using that drive contact for it. The three cooling fans, very typical of the SNA. It's exactly the same as the SNA six or the five. Remember that these fans will draw air in from this side. And it will blow the air out on that side. Okay. Uh, so we have to make sure that you install this machine in a dust free environment. Unfortunately, because of the design here, we couldn't incorporate uh, any, uh, we couldn't incorporate. If you have a look here, you're still going to have, I mean, obviously, we've taken these grommets out here, but I expect you guys to leave these in. But you're still going to have, if you have a look there, there's still place for dust to come in through there. The, the cover that comes with the machine has a built-in filter, which is in there, foam filter inside there for servicing, but that's not uh, the final frontier for dust, right? Because you're still going to get dust and little mites coming in through here, so please be careful for your installation where you're going to put it. The interface board for this machine will be sitting here. So there you have your dip switches. So this is a 120 ohm uh, uh, resistance uh, switch here, and this is purely for uh, parallelism, right? So when the machines chip out, they the switch is on an off position. When you parallel more than one of the machines, you're going to put these on. And remember, the parallelism is always the first and the last. If you've got two machines, it's both of them. Or if it's three machines, it'll be the first machine, both on, the middle machine off, and the last machine both on. These are your parallel uh, RJ45 ports for your parallelism. Uh, Machines in either single phase or three phase. Here you've got your uh, CT clamp, and the CT you'll notice it's going to uh, 
uh, board there, the little messy board, but you can see that the uh, CT is blue. Okay, that's a good color. And then here you've got your can communication to the battery, and the batteries, you've got your battery communication going out to the can in, and then from can out to the other battery can in. And remember, these are HANA batteries, right? So HANA batteries brand Lux Power. All of the dip switches on the battery will ship in the off position. You need to leave it in the off position. Do not change those. But I'm going to come back to the battery in a second. So then you have your parallel, your empty key, your battery communication, and your dongle goes in here. Remember, all of our machines ship with a dongle, okay? So the dongles are shipped in the box. Don't throw these away. Don't throw the CP plant away. Then in the background, you have your battery connection. The battery terminals are clearly not. Now, these are the trial machines. So we have made a slight change. We've added a little bus bar here so that when you connect more batteries, the batteries will connect, the, the external batteries will connect onto the bus bar. Okay, so this design is, this design here has changed slightly, ever so slightly, uh, with the newer machines that will be arriving uh, in the box shipping. Yes, your standard connection on uh, your connector block, and you will see that we've got AC output at the top, then we've got the AC input, uh, and then sorry, right at the top we've got the generator input, uh, which will also uh, dial up as your, uh, your AC coupling or your uh, auxiliary output. So you have your AC output, your AC input, and then your PV plus and minus for both streams. Yeah. Okay, so now moving down the batteries. The batteries are very well designed. Um, like I said, it's got that rounded shape here. Um, the, the battery terminal connectors have got these plugs which cover them. Uh, and it's a pretty cool thing to have. They, you just Once you put them in place, you just give them a knock and they, they'll clip into place. And they color code it as well, so you can't make a mistake with which uh, cabling you do. So the way we uh, would like you to do the, the connection is you have your, your negative here. And remember that all of these cables, these battery cables are supplied with the machine, okay? So you have a longer one, which will connect from the top of the machine. It comes down. It goes all the way down to the bottom of the machine. So the bottom battery goes there. And then you have the shorter cable going from that connector coming up to this one. The positive from the machine will go to the top battery, and then you'll have a positive link going down to the bottom. So what we've done is we've created a complete loop, a circular loop. Each battery is fitted with a circuit breaker, a rated circuit breaker, as well as an on-off switch. This is new for the HANA, the circuit breakers, but um, for the all-in-one design, this is important. As a matter of fact, the city of Cape Town will accept this type of, uh, um, they will pass this type of design because uh, it has integrated uh, switches. You can, however, if you wanted to, um, these are the covers that come for the side of the battery, you can, however, if you needed to, you can surface mount another uh, breaker here um, and then just route the cabling in such a way that you can isolate this, these two, that one and that one. So in other words, if you, with an external breaker, you should be able to power off the, if the entire battery um, uh, connection from the, from the inverter. Right, and then just moving, this is what the front of the machine looks like. And this is what uh, that side looks like. So it's pretty, a pretty cool design. Um, and then this little plate here also comes with, with the machine. Uh, and it's designed to keep the two, uh, the, the inverter bonded to the top of the machine. Okay. Um, all right, guys, thank you very much for your, uh, for, for, for um, doing that today. Um, if you have any questions, I'm going to hop straight to, uh, I'm going to hop straight to the, the chat and have a look, see uh, what our questions are. Okay, should I earth my solar panel frame even if it's double isolated? Yes, you should. Um, it's a it's a standard. Uh, this is, goes out to Mario. Um, yes, you have you, your your frame has to be earthed. Uh, it's critically important because the earth offers a very low resistance path for uh, for a short circuit. 
Okay, so that's very important, and it's it's in the SANS code. Um, Heat Metal Industries from Malawi, thanks for the support. No, actually, we thank you for your support. Trust me, without you guys, we cannot be uh, who we are. Uh, Josiah says, we are excited and can't wait to offer the beast to our clients, as are we. We're pretty excited to uh, to be getting this out in the market. I'm just a little bit disappointed that we can only bring in uh, 18 units, but uh, it goes out, uh, and... Um, Look out for the reviews. The reviews are coming out. Uh, Mario, thanks for your... Um, okay, so, hey, guys, it looks like uh, it's a wrap from us today. Thank you very much for joining, and um, we hope to see you soon in the next training session. Thank you.